Oh, we don't just allow test drives. We are going to vet that customer. We're going to make sure that they are a serious buyer. We're going to make sure that they're able to drive it. Good morning to you folks in a familiar spot here at my house and today it's a little bit I was getting ready to do a video and um, this is pretty cool you got it's raining over here and the Sun is shining over here so not very often do you see that but pretty cool stuff I was getting ready to do a video anyway because um, I'm going to do a video that may be a little bit of a hot topic or a contentious debate, as one would say. She was upset that we wouldn't let her test drive a motorhome. I don't know if it was her and her husband or her and what, who, whatever the situation was. I don't know. I don't remember. The name sounds familiar. Um, but she, she wanted to test drive a motorhome we had. I don't remember which one. I'm assuming it was a diesel pusher. I can understand how it can be construed as the, the way she typed it. Um, man, that sun feels good. That is nice. Um, I can understand the, the how it could get confused pretty quick. But let me just clear it up and say, and you tell me what you think in the comments down below. And I know there's going to be a ton of people that say I'm crazy um, and won't understand the reason why I do it the way I do it. Um, Folks, we are a small family-owned business. Typically, with small businesses, you, you, staffing is short because you're a small business. Um, and we are a very small business. So small business, I think, is uh, calculated between one and 500 employees, if I remember correctly. We have like 16 people that work here. There's really only two people on the dealership premises at any given time that are that I feel are qualified to go out and take somebody out for a ride or drive any motorhome on the lot. There's me and there's Joe as my lead technician. So typically if I'm here, I will offer when somebody asks for a test drive, I will first and foremost offer a test ride. That's where you ride with me. I do the driving and you get a feel for what the motorhome's like. Now, if you want to drive, we do, we don't do test drives. Let me just say that first and foremost, but there is a way around it. If you're looking at a motorhome we have, and the sun is just feels good. Uh, please forgive me for keep interrupting. If we have a motorhome that you're interested in buying and you're ready to buy that motorhome based on a successful test drive, we, we just get you to sign a, a simple buyer's order. No money has to exchange hands, but we, we do this to for two reasons. First and foremost, it's to release liability off of us. Some states require CDLs to drive these, some don't. Um, insurance, our insurance company looks at these as like over 26,000 pounds in most cases and they look at them like commercial vehicles. Although we are covered when it comes to full coverage and the, the damage that could be caused, Liability, there's some gray area in liability that we're not sure of. And I had this discussion with my insurance agent and the insurance company, and they couldn't definitively tell me that how who would be liable um, if I handed the keys to somebody who was unlicensed and unexperienced to drive a large and heavy motorhome. How who would be who would be liable for that? And there's not any definitive answer that I got um, from my insurance company. So I adopted from the beginning, I've adopted that you cannot test drive unless you sign a purchase agreement, basically releasing the liability uh, from me to you. So when you sign a purchase agreement, essentially you're agreeing to buy that unit and any liability that comes along with that is, is your liability. So that's that part. And we'll continue this conversation. I'm going to ask, we're going to find Mike and ask him about this lady um, she, again, uh, reading that post, uh, I don't think she had any intention to disparage us or this, even the words are in that, but it didn't bother me at all. Uh, she just was asking the question again. I'm not sure why she named us directly, 
<clears throat> or had to edit the post to maybe a lot of people are asking what dealer it was. I don't, I don't know. I didn't see that. A customer of mine sent me the post this morning when I woke up with uh, Mike and Heather in the, in the office. They did let me know that this lady was super nice. Uh, Mike had a phone conversation with her probably 20 minutes um, about our process. And I think what happened was the lady took from that, that we, you know, obviously that we don't do test drives, but I think she failed to understand a little bit about the reasons why and kind of what's behind that. So maybe we could do a better job of explaining that kind of the, hence the reason for the video. So, you know, this is just a, another part of how we operate and how we do business. And, you know, I hope you understand why we, we don't do test in end quotes, test drives doesn't mean I won't let you drive it before any money exchanges hands. It just means that I have to protect myself from liability. And uh, that's the most important thing. The impact was a bit nasty, but before seeking medical attention, there was some arguing to be done. Coffee achieved. And let's continue this conversation. I take somebody out before they, before I let them drive. If it's their first time driving a diesel pusher, I always explain. It takes me a good 20, 30 minutes to explain what to look for. And then I always have them tap the brakes because air brakes are completely different than driving a car. It's a totally different ball game. So with all that being said, you know, another, again, the other reason is the fact that it costs time, energy, money, and fuel to go out on these, uh, test drives and uh, we're a small business and we just simply don't have that kind of time and resource to be able to give everybody a test drive so and we have small amount of inventory we're very specialized and by the time we're talking to a customer uh, by the time a customer gets to us most of those customers are looking for the particular coach that we have for sale they're already know what they already know what they're looking for we don't have a tremendous amount of customers that come to us and then decide what they want to buy. They pretty much know what they're looking for and what they want to buy. They have an understanding of a couple of different floor plans. We usually have one or both of those. And it it's a pretty simple process. The customer pretty much knows what they're looking for. If we're going to lose some business because of that, I fully understand that. I know this. Um, I wish there was another way to do it. But we again, we're small. We're we do business the way that we do it, and we're okay with that. And uh, in a lot of cases, right, like right now, I've got um, almost as much inventory sold as I do available, um, and we're selling them as almost as fast as we get them in, as fast as we can get them prepped. They're heading out the door. Um, so you know, our customers are looking for an experience, and that's why I say that we're in. That we're not necessarily in the. RV business, we're in the lifestyle business, we're in the lifestyle motorhome business, and uh, we're a little bit different than, we're not a little bit different, we're a lot different than most of your RV dealers out there, uh, and we like that. We've actually chose to be this way, and I, I appreciate any of the comments that say that I'm not doing it right, I totally get what you're saying. And if I were a customer in your shoes, I might feel the same way. And I totally understand that. Ask yourself this, folks. One, to, one, one question I want to ask you. I want to pose a question to you, the public. If I have your 250, 300,000, or 150, whatever the dollar amount is, motor coach sitting here on the lot for sale as a consignment, do you want me to let anybody and everybody just come in and test drive it whenever they want? I think we all know the answer to that question. So no, we don't just allow test drives. We are going to vet that customer. We're gonna make sure that they are a serious buyer. We're gonna make sure that they're able to drive it. Uh, and we're gonna take the pr proper procedures and cautions to make sure that we're protecting ourselves from liability. That's number one, folks. We gotta make sure we have a serious buyer. Uh, we can't just allow anybody and everybody to test drive these units and I take uh, I treat my coaches the same way. I treat anybody that does a consignment uh, the same way. So we don't, uh, we do everything by appointment where again, we're a little bit different. We don't just leave these open for people to, to walk through them anytime they want. They must make an appointment for us to show a coach. There are some circumstances if I already have a coach opened up and somebody happens to swing by and they want to take a look at it. I have been known to do that before, but for the most part, we are going to do appointments only. 
we're not going to allow test drives. Um, it, it, and I've kind of covered that, and that's that's hugely important to understand. If you had a coach sit in your driveway, you had listed for sale, you wouldn't just let anybody come and test drive it without asking serious questions, making sure they're qualified, able, and ready to purchase, uh, and qualified and able body to drive the motorhome. So think about that. We have some really cool content coming up in the in the next uh, in the next little bit that I'm, I'm pretty excited about. Some stuff. It's pretty interesting. I um, hope you en enjoy this video and others that we are doing. And I uh, hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. And I certainly hope I talk with you soon.